you know, they, they, up to a certain age, they let you sleep. Up to a certain age, they let you rest. Isn't that right? And then after a certain age, before you know it, mama starts knocking on the door. And it's like, you know, what, what, what's going on here now? Because I've been accustomed to sleeping and, and, and getting up the time that I want to get up. You know, but after a certain age, you know, you, you, you pass a certain plateau. After a certain birthday, all of a sudden, mama's knocking on the door, waking you up. Why are you waking me up? You know, mama, where's my breakfast? I'm not getting your breakfast, boy. Get up. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. What, what, what do I have to get up for? You Listen, you got to get up so you can start getting yourself together to start looking for some work. Because you're either going to go to work or you're going to go to school. But you're getting out of here. Hey, man, I know you've heard those words. Ah, uh, yes. And what we try to do is instill in our young people, um, amen, that there are benefits to labor. You don't go to work just because you want to hang around with work, the, the folk that you work with. You just enjoy their company all that much. I go, the reason I go to work when I was going to work was because I wanted my paycheck. Amen. I knew every other week they were going to give me a certain little piece of paper that would bring a smile to my face. Hey, thank God. You know, uh, every two weeks I had something in my hand that was before direct deposit. That's how uh, old I am, y'all. Amen. They used to give us our checks in our hand. We used to go to work on payday and at a certain time they would come around and they would hand you your check in your hand. And at that time you would say to yourself, for well, all I've been through, you know, uh, it, it, it was worth it. Amen. Because you look at that paycheck and you say, thank God. I had given them sweat and tears. I never gave them any blood, thank God. But let me tell you, sometime you may meet up with situations that may cause you to have to give even blood. But work requires sweat. It requires tears. And that means that you're going to have to put yourself out a little bit. It's nice to think sometime that you are so much of that, that you won't have to sweat and you won't have to shed tears, you know, and folk want, uh, you know, shirt and tie jobs, but they don't want to go to school and, and do what it takes to be able to work at a shirt and tie job. But if you don't learn how, amen, to improve this, then you're going to end up having us to use this. Oh, yes. You've got to train your brain. You've got to learn. You've got to study. You've got to apply yourself. And then after you do that, then hopefully and maybe you won't have to kill yourself trying to work on the job. But, but look at Nehemiah here. This man worked. He was up there with his workers. He didn't tell them, you build a wall, because I heard the wall has been torn down. But he went up there with them. As you read in this particular book, the Bible tells us those workers were working, and some of them had to work with a weapon in one hand and a tool in the other. Can you imagine a weapon in one hand waiting just for the enemy to surface or resurface and a tool in the other hand swinging your hammer or building the wall taking your mallet and putting the bricks in place pounding them down and watching to see where the enemy is coming from people of God I'm telling you this is the kind of mentality that we have to have. We cannot afford to stay lackadaisical. We cannot afford to be ambivalent. We cannot afford not to be watchful. When the Bible is saying, watch as well as pray. Keep your eye out for the enemy, but don't stop working. Keep on 
building. Keep on working on the wall. Now what's so important about building a wall? Because here's the thing, if you put a wall up, quite possibly, you might be just trying to separate yourself from everybody else. If you put a wall up, it may be because you are interested in warfare, but it's not that. The reason you have walls, particularly in the Bible, understand the symbolism of it. A wall represented protection from the enemy. A wall represented salvation, which means deliverance from the enemy. The enemy could not simply come in on you whenever they wanted to come in on you because they would have to come up over the wall or they would have to come through the wall. But there were people that were stationed on the wall. My understanding is that the walls of that particular city were so wide that they had homes that were built on the wall. The wall was so wide, it was like a city street. And they would put homes on the walls. And so the people who lived in the homes that were built on the walls were the people who were there acting as watchmen on the walls. To get into the city, you had to try and come over the wall or you had to try and come through the wall. So how did they protect the areas that were doorways through the wall? Through the wall, they had gates. In order to get through the gate, you had to have something that allowed you to get through the gate. You did not just walk into the city. So it was important that this wall be built. But the enemy did not want the wall rebuilt. But Nehemiah kept working. And Nehemiah's people kept working. And they kept building and they kept piling up bricks and mortar and everything that they could to make the wall a strong wall because if the wall is strong then I am more greatly protected by the strength of this wall. What I am saying today people of God we are going through much in today's society but we cannot afford to give up. We cannot afford to back down. We cannot afford to stop working, but we've got to keep building. Labor has its rewards. And so Nehemiah says, amen. He says, oh God, strengthen my hands. The enemy is after me, but I want you to strengthen my hands. Make me strong. Help me to keep building. Help me to keep putting up the bricks because I've got to keep the enemy out. It's important, people of God, that we don't let the enemy put us to sleep. Don't get to the place where you become lackadaisical in your approach to your salvation. Amen. When you've been away from the church, make sure you get back to the church. When you stop praying for a while, make sure you get back to your prayer. When you stop reading your Bible for a while, make sure you get back to the book. Hallelujah to God. When you stop exercising your spiritual exercise, make sure you get back to it. Build yourself up, hallelujah, because the enemy is going to continue to fight you, but there is benefit for your labor. The songwriter said, if you labor, God is going to give you a crown. If you labor, God has your reward. If you labor, you ought to know that there is a prize uh, that you're going to get uh, but you've got to labor hallelujah the benefits of labor nothing to be gained <laughs> amen sitting at home 
waiting for somebody to bring you something when you can get out and get it. So I sat there with my newspaper and my crabs. Hallelujah. And I looked at the shells. I looked at the claws. And I looked at the body of the crab. And I made up my mind. There is too much delicious crab meat sitting in the legs of that crab for me to say to myself that it's not worth it. So I picked up one of the crab legs. I cracked it in half. The first one that I cracked, the crab meat came out easily. And I put it in and sucked it down. 